G'day, Espresso here. Welcome back to the shop. This is a Festo or Festool uh, random orbit sander and it was given to me. Uh, when I received it, the, the pad was badly damaged and I replaced that. It was very expensive, about $95 for the new pad. But I figured it was worth it. I, you know, it is Festo. And I know some people bag these things, they say that they're overpriced, very expensive, which is true. Uh, and, you know, some people say they, they break just like any other tool. Now, interestingly, the Festool system includes this little gadget here, which is called a plug-it system. And the idea of this is that it allows you to swap out the tools at the bench. So if you want to change from a, say, sander to a router, you just swap this into the, the new tool, rather than walk back to the PowerPoint and, and do it that way. And that's all fine and dandy, and so that's a great idea. Except the plug that came with the sander that I just showed you looked like this when I got it. Now, I didn't do this. I, I guess that someone tripped over the cord and it's just yanked out the, uh, the heavy insulation here from whatever strain relief is inside. Now, I thought, no problem. I'll just dismantle the plug and I'll reattach the strain relief to this thicker insulation here. And you can imagine my shock and surprise when I realise that you cannot service these things. They're moulded around whatever conductors are inside them and the only way into it is to saw it open and that would ruin it. Now I could just wrap this with insulation tape and uh, that it's not going to last. It's, you know, it's going to eventually unravel and it's going to look daggy. Um, there's got to be a better way of doing this. So what I'm planning to do is to repair it with this stuff. This is called Sugru. Now Sugru is a rubberized polymer and once you expose it to air it begins to set. And it adheres very well to substrates and there are some substrates it doesn't adhere to and that's actually going to be an advantage for the way I'm going to do this. So I'm going to make a two-part mold and we're going to try wrapping the Sugru around this and moulding it at the same time. So uh, that's what the subject of this video is. Um, it may be a complete fail, who can tell, but you know it's raining outside. <laughs> I figure this is worth a go. Okay, let's get to it.
Well, there we go. We got the two halves of the die polished. Uh, I'm not going to go too over the top with that. It just needs to be uh, smooth inside. There are no tool marks. And the notion is that the damaged section is going to go into the die. It'll already have the Suguru moulded around it. And then the top half of the die is going to be closed onto that. And I'll just get this together. What I have to be a little bit careful about is that this end where the cable exits this end of the, the die that we keep the cable concentric same at this end we need to make sure that that's concentric where it enters the the die and for that reason I've made this little timber die or timber jig so everything's going to get clamped into that and the two sections of the die here are raised up to the correct center height for the whole cable so when everything's clamped down Theoretically, uh, the cable's entering and leaving the die uh, at the center axis line. So, um, I'm doing my bit to save the planet here. I could just chuck this away and buy a new one. And, I mean, the cost is an issue, but uh, I figure that developing this technique might be useful sometime in the future when I cannot buy a replacement. And uh, you're forced to do it this way. So um, I think it's a worthwhile exercise. So yep, here we are, we're being green. Now according to the Suguru FAQ, the website, it says that you can use just about anything that's oily as a release agent. Uh, they'd also suggest soapy water and uh, the other option is to use uh, like a cling film uh, draped into the mold. I was a bit worried that the cling film was gonna crease and would leave impressions in the finished uh, molded Suguru and soapy water it's got to stay in the mold for 24 hours so i was worried that it might dry out and then it would stick to the dye so i'm going to use good old vaseline so i'm just going to paint this in here the area that i have to be most careful of is this little um, cavity at the end here so i just want to make sure i get an even coverage i'll just paint this on did you hear about the young married couple that didn't uh, didn't know the difference between Vaseline and putty? Yeah, all the glass fell out of their windows. <laughs> Alrighty. Okay, well, here's the setup we're going to use. Everything's clamped down, and when the two halves of the die go in there, I'll be able to put a big clamp on top of that, pull it down really tight and any excess Suguru is going to get squeezed out either, either end I hope uh, or it'll go sideways and it'll leave a flash line down the side which I can trim off later. The hard part is going to be getting the Suguru moulded around this and getting the right amount there. I've got more than I need um, and you get plenty of time to mould this stuff so I'll sort of try to get a rudimentary shape to it before I put in the two halves of the die. Alright, it's sort of like the consistency of soft um, modeling clay I guess so I'm guessing if you weren't too worried about the appearance you could just sort of mold this by hand and get it sort of close to the shape that you want but um, no let's do it properly now sort of almost feel like that's enough but there's a you know got to be careful that it goes where we want it when this die closes. Let's try and squish a bit more up that end. Ah, uh, hang the expense, I'll open the other packet. Okay, here we go. <laughs> I think I might have overdone it. Well, squishing out everywhere. So clearly had way more than I needed.
Right, well, I can sort of feel that the mould is closed. There's no gap or no discernible gap down either side. And it's actually nice stuff to use. It, uh, it doesn't, it's not sticky so much. It does sort of leave a slight residue on your fingers, but it's not sticky like, I don't know, like silicon or anything like that, although it is based on a silicon compound. So that's tidied up quite nicely. There's the leftover. So um, if I can find some use for that, <laughs> I'll uh, mold it around something and we'll see how it goes. But there you go. So let's wait 24 hours and open that up and see if it's been a success. Okay, well I've waited the mandatory 24 hours, so let's get the clamp off. See how we've gone. Okay, I'm just going to get a blade in here and try and separate this. Uh, there you go. Uh, it hasn't actually set. And I think the reason is that this has kept us uh, basically separated from the air. So the ends are cured, but the middle is still soft. So I'm going to put this back together and I'm going to leave it longer. So I was a bit premature in taking that apart, really. Okay, so I'm going to have to clamp this. Alright, so we're going to leave that another day or two. Well, here we are, 48 hours later. And uh, I'm sure the burning question here is, did it work? Well, the answer is sort of. Now, when I separated the two halves of the die, it became clear that this centre section here was not going to cure with the die closed. The end sections uh, were fine. They had cured. They were sort of uh, semi-rigid and rubbery, which is the consistency that I was after. This centre section, though, was still the same consistency as the Suguru when it came out of the foil packet. So at the end of the day, what I decided to do is to just leave the die open or actually remove the die altogether. I had to mold this center section back into shape manually. So I just got my finger, I wet it with some uh, liquid soap, went over that, just smeared that back down to the correct shape. Now this side came out really uh, perfect. This side here has got a couple little defects in it, but nothing major. And for some reason, there's a little tiny crease in this edge here. I'm not sure where that came from. I may not have had enough suguru molded around that when I closed the die. But Here's the thing, it's sort of flexible, it sort of has the same consistency as this section of the plug. It seems to have stuck quite well to the insulation at either end. And it's sort of, I don't know, it seems to be doing the job. So there you go, Suguru uh, can be used to repair this sort of uh, application or this sort of plug. With the excess that I had left over, I made a little cap for my scriber. This has got a magnetic tip on it, and uh, it sticks to the bench, sticks to swarf, sticks to drill bits. It's a bit of a nuisance, really. So I just put some mould release on this end and formed the excess Suguru around that. So I can still use the magnet. And it sort of, um, I don't know, just makes it easy to pick up, and it doesn't sort of get stuck to things when you put them away. So there you go, made use of that. So, uh, I don't know, as a repair, did it work? Yeah, uh, it sort of does the job that I want. So there you go, Suguru, 15 bucks for a repair like that, $65 for a new plug, I reckon I'm ahead. So there you go, back to woodworking now, and thanks for watching.